If your spouse has had an affair, then you are probably wondering, once a cheater, always a cheater? If my spouse has already had an affair, does that mean that they're going to keep doing this? Does that mean that my marriage is doomed? Does that mean that it can't be saved? And all of these questions are absolutely vital. It's great that you're asking these questions because it shows that you're not necessarily just wanting to end your marriage and move on, but that there's something inside of you saying, maybe there's a chance, maybe we can fight for this. So many people, they'll have this experience in their marriage where their spouse has an affair, or they'll just see someone else's marriage and see that this happens. And they say, you know what, if that ever happened to me, I would leave. But in this video, I'm going to share with you 10 things that you should consider if your spouse has had an affair, whether they have had one and it's over or they are currently in one and it's currently happening. And so in this video, I'm going to be talking about 10 things for you to think about and for you to hopefully implement so that you can ultimately save your marriage after an affair. My name is Kimberly Holmes. I'm the CEO of Marriage Helper. And at Marriage Helper, we actually specialize in this situation. When people come to us whose marriages are currently being affected by an affair or have been affected by an affair, we have an amazing success rate in not only seeing these marriages saved, but the marriage is still being together and strong many, many years later. So many counselors, retreats, other workshops and seminars, they'll say, we can't even see you or work with you unless the affair is over, but not us. We know that your marriage can be saved and it can be made better. But right now there's some things you need to understand before that can happen. So let's jump into those. The first thing you need to do is believe that an affair is not necessarily the end of a marriage. Yes, affairs are terrible. They should not happen and there's never a justification for an affair to happen. But just because an affair has happened doesn't mean your spouse is a bad person. It doesn't mean that the affair is always going to continue and it doesn't mean that your marriage should end. A lot of people feel like just because an affair has happened that they have to end the marriage. A lot of people feel that because of religious reasons, which I won't get into on this video, but if you want to know more about that and if you should end your marriage after an affair because of your faith, then you can look at more videos that we have here on YouTube. So be sure to subscribe and look at all of the other videos we have, plus you'll get some notifications when we have new ones come up. But the affair doesn't have to be the end of a marriage. In fact, I would not be alive as a person if an affair meant that a marriage should be over because my parents had divorced because my dad had an affair. And when they got remarried, they had me after that remarriage. And so I'm a firm believer that amazing things can happen from the result of saving your marriage after an affair. It doesn't have to be the end of a marriage. In that same sense, number two is you're not alone in this. A lot of people feel like they are because no one talks about the fact that their marriage has gone through difficulties. It's seen as a scarlet letter, a badge of shame, something that we don't want to talk about, which ultimately perpetuates the problem throughout society because everyone thinks that everyone else's marriage is great and wonderful, but in reality, everyone struggles with something. And while it can be embarrassing and it's not something that you just want to shout from the rooftops that your marriage is going through this, it is important to know that you're not alone and that there is a support system of people that are going through the same thing that you're going through who can be there for you. At Marriage Helper, we have some private Facebook groups that you can be a part of. If you want to contact us for more information on how to be a part of that, you can. You can go to marriagehelper.com. You can call us at 866-903-0990, and we'd love to get you access into those private groups. But you need a support system of people who are going to understand what you're going through and who are going to encourage you to stand for your marriage, even though it might seem impossible. You're going to go through so many different emotions during this time. And we want to be there for you. We want to have a support team that's there for you because you don't have to do this alone. 
The third thing that you want to make sure that you understand is at this point, if your spouse is involved in an affair currently, or even if they just recently ended one and they're not sure about their feelings right now, that that's very normal. But you also want to understand that during this time of them processing or them disconnecting from you, the last thing you want to do is to push your spouse to come back to you. You don't want to beg. You don't want to cling. You don't want to whine. You don't want to overwhelm your spouse by calling them all the time, texting them all the time, crying all the time, doing things to try and get them to come back to you because ultimately it's going to push them further away. You see, when we do those things, when we cry, beg, whine, and plead, we're doing it because we're so hurt, because we love them so much, and we just want them to come back. But ultimately, what it ends up doing is pushing them further away. So don't do those things. Another thing that you don't want to try and do right now, number four, is you don't want to try and convince your spouse that their lover is bad for them. If your spouse is currently in love with someone else or even just recently ended the affair, then they're going to be very sensitive to things like that. You see, when someone's in love with someone else, when there's an affair going on, we call it limerence at Marriage Helper. It's actually a scientific term used to describe these feelings that the person is going through. I'm not going to talk too much about limerence in this video. You can find many more videos that talk about it in depth on our YouTube channel. So be sure to subscribe. Be sure to look for those. But when a person is in limerence, when they're madly in love with another person, if any person tries to come between them and their lover, like you, if you try to become, to come between them and start telling them that, that this person is bad for them, that they have all these bad qualities about them, then you're going to become the enemy. And right now you don't need to become the enemy. That's again, just going to push your spouse further away. Instead, You don't need to mention that at all. And you can find out more about that in our other YouTube videos that talk about limerence. But no, for now, don't try and convince your spouse that the person is bad for them or that they're evil or that they're doing a terrible thing. They're not going to listen to you. It's not going to make a difference and it's not going to change their actions. Instead, what you want to do is you want to start working on you. And you might be thinking, why should I have to work on me? I'm not the one who's had an affair. I'm not the one who's out living with someone else or out doing all of these things. Why do I need to work on me? Here's why. Because if you're consuming your mind with everything that your spouse is doing and thinking about what they're doing or or just ruminating on the things they have done, those thoughts are going to consume your mind and take you to a place you don't want to go a place where you're depressed, a place where you're anxious, a place where you're scared and fearful. And it's going to change every interaction that you have with your spouse and not just your spouse. It's going to change every interaction you have with your kids, your friends, your coworkers, because you're going to be so negative thinking about those things. So instead you want to do something positive for you because you're right. You aren't the one doing these things. So why should you be the one that's undergoing these negative emotions? It's okay to have these emotions. I'm definitely not saying that, but now's the time for you to work on you, to get in the best shape you can be physically, intellectually, emotionally, and spiritually. We call it the pies. You can find out more on other videos we have here on YouTube about the pies, but by working on you, it's only gonna make you a better person, which bonus is going to make you more attractive to your husband or to your wife so that ultimately they'll want to come back to you. Here's another thing you don't want to do, especially as you start learning more about affairs and start watching more of our other videos that we have. You don't want to try and explain to your spouse what they're going through. You don't want to share videos with them about how affairs work or what limerence is. You don't want to try and diagnose which part of limerence they're in, if you're familiar with limerence already, because the more you try and explain these things to your spouse, the more defensive they're going to get. They're going to block you out. They're going to shut you out. And then they're not going to be open and willing to listen to the things about affairs and about limerence when they need to, which is 
when the affair is coming to an end or even after it's over, those are the times that they're going to be more open to it. But another part of this is your spouse is going to be more likely to listen to something about the affair, what they're feeling, all of those kinds of things if it's not coming from you. When things are coming from you, if you're sending articles or videos or trying to talk to them about these things, then again, they're going to shut you out because they've hurt you. They don't want to feel like you're attacking them. They don't want to feel like you're trying to get them to do something they don't want to do. And so they're much more likely to listen to these things about what they're going through if they are the ones who start asking about it, if they are the ones who start looking for it or inquiring about it. So you don't want to push this on them now at a time that it's not going to make a difference and they're not going to be able to absorb it. You want to wait until the right time. You've heard the phrase, the right action at the wrong time is still the wrong action. That is absolutely true in this kind of situation. Another thing you want to do during this time is you want to drag out the divorce as long as possible if that's something you're going through. If your spouse is in an affair and they filed for divorce, then you want to take advantage of lengthening the time. Why? Because if your spouse is in limerence, if they're in a relationship affair, as we call it, where they're actually in love with them and it's not just a, a one night stand that occurred at one time, but this is something that's ongoing, then that is going to last a period of time. Limerence, as that is called, lasts anywhere from three to 48 months, according to the most recent research. And so if you can drag out the divorce, then you have a better chance of your spouse falling out of love with that other person, coming to their senses, and ultimately, hopefully, wanting to come back to the marriage. The other thing that you want to do is you want to, again, in this time, as you're dragging these things out, as you're not talking about certain things, you want to become the better option. Just because your spouse might be ending an affair or thinking about ending the affair, or maybe they have ended the affair when that time comes, just because the affair ends doesn't necessarily mean that they are going to jump right back into your arms, that they're going to come running back home. And there's a lot of reasons for that. And a lot of those reasons can start happening now, even while the affair is currently going on. If you are telling your family and friends everything terrible that your spouse is doing, if you're talking about it on social media, if you're making your spouse feel guilty about what they're doing, if you're attacking them for what they're doing, all of those things are going to add up to where in the long run, once the affair ends, they could definitely look back and say, the damage is done. I can't go back. I shouldn't go back. Look at everything I've hurt, all the people I've hurt, everything I've screwed up. I don't want to go back to that. Now, I'm not saying that you should approve of the affair. That's absolutely not what I'm saying. But you should definitely be picky about who you tell, what you say, the kind of picture you paint about your spouse during this time, and how you make your spouse feel during this time. Again, that's not to say that you don't, that you're approving, you don't want to approve, absolutely not. But if you're consistently beating your spouse up about it, if you're consistently attacking them, they're not going to want to come rushing back to you. I know that might sound controversial, maybe different than something you've heard, but there's a ton of reasons that we teach that. And if you want to save your marriage, if that's your end goal, if you really want to bring your spouse back, then there is a difference between accepting your spouse as a person and accepting the actions that they do. You don't have to accept their current actions, but they do need to know that you still love them, that you can still accept them, that you can forgive what they have done and move on. So you want to be able to keep those things in mind. You may also want to consider, especially if there's a divorce or separation going on, talking to an attorney. You want to find one who's going to encourage you, who's going to stand with you and agrees with the fact that you want to stand for your marriage. But you want to make sure you're protecting yourself and your kids and your finances every way you know how. And finally, if there's an affair going on, then you want to consider trying to convince your spouse to do one last action before they end the marriage. What does that mean? A lot of times, especially if there's a separation or divorce on the table, then you have some leverage, so to say. 
you can ask your spouse and say, hey, I know that you want this divorce and, or I know you want this separation or I know you want this certain thing in the divorce and I would be willing to give that to you if you would be willing to do this with me. If you would be willing to go to one of the marriage helper workshops with me, if you'd be willing to go to counseling with me, if you'd be willing to go to one of the workshops for co-parenting with me, whatever that might be that you want to use as your final ditch effort, then try and get your spouse to agree to go to that with you. Our workshops that we do for marriages, especially ones that have been affected by an affair, we have a 77% success rate at that marriage being saved. And it's not because at the workshop we twist any arms or we make anyone feel guilty or anything like that. In fact, most of our facilitators and a lot of people on our team, they have experienced an affair in their marriage as well. So we understand what it feels like and we definitely don't preach or judge or disrespect anyone or beat anyone up for it we understand how it feels. And in our workshop, the revelations that people get throughout the weekend, the the things that we teach and the way they realize how it applies to their lives makes such a change in people's lives and in people's marriages. If we can help you, if you want more information about our marriage workshops, our coaching, or anything else we do, you can contact us. You can go to marriagehelper.com or you can call us at 866-903-0990. Whatever it is that you're going through right now with your marriage, right now with the affair, we would love to help.